In a previous presentation, I characterized X-ray production as high-speed electrons being decelerated by the target of the anode. While this is basically true, it is not the whole story. Electrons do not interact equally with the target material because to something the size of an electron, the target is not a solid mass, but a loose collection of tungsten atoms. Bremsstrahlung is a German word that means breaking radiation, breaking in the sense of slowing down. Specifically, high-speed electrons interact with the electrical field of the atom's nucleus, slow down, and lose energy in the form of X-ray photons. In this presentation, I will depict three states of X-ray energy. X-rays vibrate as they travel, and low-energy X-rays vibrate at a slow rate relative to higher-energy X-rays. For this presentation, I will depict low-energy X-rays as red in color. Green waves will represent medium energy X-rays. Notice that as the energy increases, the X-rays vibrate more vigorously and have a shorter wavelength. The highest energy X-rays will be represented by a blue wave and will vibrate a great deal compared to their lower energy waves as they travel. And as before, the frequency increases. Here we have a depiction of a tungsten nucleus. For this demonstration, we will ignore the electrons and their orbitals. Surrounding the nucleus is a blue electrical field generated by the protons of the nucleus. Notice the field is stronger at its center and becomes less, less strong as we move away from the nucleus. To the right of the nucleus, there are three high-speed electrons. Initially, all three electrons will have the same energy. Let's follow the path of the top electron. It moves in a straight line until it enters the electrical field of the nucleus. It enters the field close to the nucleus, where the field is the strongest. The attraction of the field, combined with the kinetic energy of the electron, causes the electron to curve and slow down, break, as it moves. The electron releases most of its energy in the form of an X-ray photon. Notice that the photon has a high energy because the electron released most of its energy during the interaction. The electron exits the nucleus with considerably less energy. The next electron will accelerate and it enters the nuclear field. At this position, the electron is further from the nucleus where the field is weaker. The electron is not slowed as much as the first electron, so the X-ray photon it produces has much less energy. Also note the direction of the photon is completely random. They can be emitted in any direction. The electron exits the field and can go on to have further interactions. The bottom electron accelerates and interacts with the nuclear field at its weakest point. As you might guess, it barely is slowed down and releases very low energy. As before, the electron exits the nuclear field and may go on to interact with other atoms in the target. Before we continue this presentation, let's summarize the three possibilities for interaction. For the sake of demonstration, all three electrons start with the same amount of kinetic energy. If the top electron comes close to the nuclear field, it is slowed down a great deal, and most of its energy is expressed as an X-ray photon emitted in a random direction. Electrons 
Interacting with the middle distance from the nucleus will be braked a moderate amount and will emit X-ray photons with a moderate energy. Electrons that interact with the nucleus at the greatest distance are slowed down a slight amount and the X-ray photon they produce has a very low energy. Of the three interactions, which is most likely and which is least likely to occur? Think of the atom as a giant dartboard with the bullseye centered over the nucleus. Now ask the question, which part of the board is easiest to hit? If you come up with the outer rings, you are correct. They occupy more spatial volume than the inner rings, and the outer rings are where the lowest amount of energy transfer will occur when an electron interacts with a nuclear field. So the most likely interactions are the low energy type. And the least likely interactions are the ones that hit the bullseye. If we draw a graph comparing the energy of photons in kilovolts versus the number of photons produced, we will end up with a curve that looks something like this. A curve that favors low energy interactions over high energy interactions. If a beam using this mix of radiation energies were used to produce an image, it would cause needless damage because a significant amount of radiation would be absorbed locally in the patient's tissues, contributing nothing to image formation. Thankfully, the beam exiting the tube does not have this profile. The beam is filtered by the tube wall and other physical elements of the X-ray tube and collimator assembly, removing a significant portion of low energy radiation and a more bell-shaped curve as the result. The yellow portion of the curve is a result of the likelihood of Bremsstrahlung interactions combined with the likelihood of low energy radiation interacting with tube filtration. The remaining blue portion of the curve is shaped by the filtration. What are the important facts one must know to understand Bremsstrahlung interactions? Bremsstrahlung is the product of interactions of high speed electrons with the nuclear field. Most but not all of the radiation exiting a conventional X ray tube is a product of Bremsstrahlung effect. Regardless of the electron's initial energy, the X ray beam exiting the tube will not be monoenergetic, but rather a mix of energies that approximate a bell shaped curve. This will end my presentation. Thank you for your attention.